any words of advice for people watching this going, oh my gosh, I have to go into the garage and see if, see if I still have my Matchbox cars from when I was a kid. Uh, how do I get my wife or whatever to uh, explain, uh, to tolerate me dragging it in and putting it in my office on a display case level? Well, oh boy. I tell you what, bring her over here. We'll walk through here and maybe she'll have a little bit of sympathy for you. <laughs> Those of you uh, looking on our uh, YouTube channel, by the way, this is an old beat up car, matchbox car that I uh, have put on the show before. Uh oh. When we had Steph on the show, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Vauxhall Victor number 45. That is that. And uh, it's a matchbox car. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something different. Now, yes. it's all beat up. This is a models of yesteryear and it's the Lesney Modern Amusements and it's in pretty decent shape for as old as it is. I'd say it's like in the 50s or something like that. Yeah, well, I had that one. Did you really? Yeah. All right. I have no right. clue what they are, but I had it. It's kind of like, uh, what do they call it? It's the steam uh, driven. Steam powered and it used to have oompa horns and, and steam amusement. amusement. Music, uh -huh. that kind yeah. of stuff. All right, so this might give you an idea. We're going to play with toys today. All right. Uh, let's get to the good stuff. Yes. Welcome to the Talking About Cars podcast, where everybody has a car story. I am Randy Cardoon, and that is In His Car, Hot Rod Bob Beck. We're now, talking Bob, about cars, so I'm in a car. Oh, that, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. All okay. right, well, on the show today, we're going to have some fun with cars. Cars, the first cars we got as kids. We're going to talk to a guy who has, I kid you not, over 200,000 of these. No. Except, except his is in much better shape, I would hope. Uh, and his name is Jim Gallegos. He lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico-ish in that area. And Jim is uh, standing by to join us, and he's going to talk about his matchbox cars, but he also has corgis and hot wheels and, and just, he has cars up the wazoo. So he's going to have all sorts of fun stuff to talk about, and I think we're going to get some good stories out of that. Uh, do you remember your first car, Bob? My, my first toy car? Uh, toy car, yes, because they're the same as what you just showed. Uh -huh. uh, matchbox was the car of choice for us four or five year olds and, and things like that. This is pre Hot Wheels, with... remember. We're, we're oh, all yeah. pre Hot yeah, Wheels. We are, yes. Mm -hmm. And I remember my parents were remodeling the bathroom. So they had a bunch of these uh, ceramic tiles left over. So while I was sick, I had the measles, I was stuck at home. I made a road on my bed of these tiles and my matchbox cars would go on the tiles, you know, different places in the bedroom. See, when we got sick as kids, we had the mumps. We, yeah. I was lucky enough not to have the German measles, but I mean, every time I got sick, my aunt or my uncle would always show up with a matchbox car. And it got to a point where my mother said, hey, you don't want to be that sick. You know, Randy, you can't be that sick. Because every time he started telling my aunt and my uncle, every time, he, you know, suddenly he's sick all the time now because you guys give him cars, knock it off. So, you know. <laughs> That's yeah, kind of what it was when we were kids. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So without further ado, let's get on to the show and welcome our guest, uh, who is going to be coming in from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he has a lot of things uh, to show us. He's going to show us his collection, or at least some of it. Well, so show, us. Kind of show us. Show yeah. us. I think I bet you a lot of you collected when you were kids. So I think that's something that is, is something you're gonna wanna stick around for for that. So, uh, would you like to uh, do the intro, Bob? Since everybody apparently staring at you in your car. <laughs> yes, they're looking at me in the car and I haven't got a headset on, so they're actually seeing how long my golden locks are right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the man with the largest automotive collection in the world. Here he is right now. I forgot his name. Jim Gallego. Jim Gallegos, everybody. 
And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, live from New Mexico. Jim Gallegos joining us here on the Talking About Cars podcast. Jim, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it, it's We've never had a Matchbox guy or a – well, we have had Hot Wheels people on the show, Bob. Remember when we had that group over at the uh, – car show out in the Orange County Fairgrounds. That's true. Yes. That's true. We, we do have a mat, Matchbox guy, and, and Jim, you are more than just a Matchbox guy, correct? I am. I've got Matchbox, I've got Hot Wheels, uh, you name it. I've got about 450 different brands. <laughs> wow. There, there are that many brands of, of small little cars like that? At least. <laughs> really? I never knew yes. that. So if we were to if we were to look at it at these cars as a specific scale, is that one sixty fourth scale, one forty six scale, uh, HO? Uh, what would they be classified as? The majority of them are one sixty fourth. I've got about one hundred eighty thousand one sixty fourth models. Wow. I'm sorry, I thought you said one hundred and eighty thousand. Well, that makes it easier to store, I suppose. Uh, not really. I actually had to build a guest house for them. <laughs> 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 oh, my wife I don't keep anything in the house. <laughs> my wife needs to be listening to this. Oh, so does mine. She will, whether my she wants to or not. Yeah, she's she's yeah. gonna go. She's gonna go. Oh, oh, real. I feel suddenly very lucky now. Bring right. uh, about to New Mexico, and we'll show it to them. <laughs> yeah, my so, five hundred slot cars don't need a thing anymore. That's right. Uh, Bob is a big. Uh, in fact, Bob is a big slot car guy. And he has a bunch of them in his closet. Got a lot of those too. A lot of Auroras. <laughs> okay. I, I've got a... You know, oh, okay. So, okay. For those. But before we started, Bob and I talked briefly and we asked the magic question, uh, what were our first cars that we remember growing up with? Now, this isn't something that you just started, Jim. How far back does this... Oh, well, let's just say fixation with uh, toy cars go. And do you remember the first time you, what was your first Matchbox car or whatever car it was? What did it well, start I'm going to show it to you. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> Readily available. Look at that. This one right here. Ah, the Ford GT. Ford GT right. number 41. And that's, this one was mine as a kid. This is a white one with the six on it. Yeah. Yep. And wow. that's the first one I remember. I probably had others before that because I started in 1964. Okay. I, I see. See, Jim, we were just discussing this, Bob and I, and, and I pulled out probably what is close to, I, I don't remember exactly what the first one was, but I want to say it was one of four cars, all matchbox. And this was probably one of them right here. This, all right. Beaten. Uh, the paint job is not the best. This is the Vauxhall that I picked up at the beginning of the show. Uh, yeah. Number 45 with gray wheels, the whole bit. Uh, it, it has been uh, through the ringer. It had been played in backyards and through matchbox cities and all sorts of other things in the backyard and, and on the bed and on this and on that. So it's been around with us a long time. But the fact that yours looks so pristine, what, what, how did that happen? Well, here's, Did you not? Now here's yours. Oh, there it is. I've actually got one of those too. But yes, that's your box hall. That's um, it. That's my what my box hall looked like later with windows. Yes. The reason is when I was growing up, I would buy two of each, and my mother put one away, and I played with the other ones. But being the youngest of six kids, uh, I didn't play with them a lot. So I took really good care, and I always kept them in the boxes. That's okay. smart. <laughs> you, yeah, I tried to do the same thing, but the boxes ended up getting worn out from opening and closing them. And I think I maybe had five or six different Matchbox cars at that point in time. But mm -hmm. to where they are now, I have no idea. But <laughs> I'm looking at your shop or your home right now, and the display cases are just amazing in itself. Well, I've got about 100 of vintage display cases going all the way back to some of the first ones. And uh, as shops have closed, uh, I've tried to recreate a lot of the different display cases by purchasing them. And, and I've purchased them all along as well, because that's what I stored my collection in growing up. 
where do you where did you get them growing up because at that time only the local toy store had them well they would order one for you if you wanted you could order the display cases through a hobby shop and they used to run fifteen dollars each which was a lot of money back then yeah things that my head is exploding <laughs> things that if i only knew back then number one get two two at the same time number two how you could order the display cases through the toy store it never struck me as a kid. Never. Randy, can you call your cousins and tell them you're feeling ill and see if they'll bring you some new ones? Oh, exactly. Well, I was explaining the way we would always get them as kids is one of us would, you know, we went through the mumps. We went through chicken pox. We went through common cold. We, we got a headache watching the Green Hornet when we were kids. Whatever it was, we had... We had we were forced to eat celery soup by Campbell's. That that's another story that traumatized me for years. Mm -hmm. But whatever it was, um, Matchbox cars in my case would always make it make me feel better. It was like, hey, okay, well I'm fine now, you know that kind of thing. And my aunt or my uncle at the time would always come by and say, hey, you know. In fact, my first Matchbox car was at a store on La Brea in Los Angeles, right across the street from the old Firestone store, just south of uh, Wilshire. Uh -huh. And I remember there was a little toy store there and we walked in because we lived down the street and we'd walk in and I, the first time I stared at the array of Matchbox cars in the display case. I think, you know, as a five or six year old, your jaw drops mm -hmm. and incompetent drooling starts. Of course, you know, I, I finally mm -hmm. got I finally was able to handle that last Thursday, so I don't do that anymore. Thank heavens. <laughs> but that that's sure. yeah, but that's <laughs> but seriously though, that that seems a, an interesting way. Do you remember Jim where exactly um where exactly you got your first cars? I do. It's a place called the Hobby Corner, which is long gone. Uh here in Albuquerque. And I would I would get them whenever I had enough money. I would go and get a couple of them and get whatever I could. Now, what did Matchbox cars sell for back at that point in time? Let's put that in perspective. Uh, 59 cents. Yeah, 50, I was going to say 59 cents or so. And the interesting cents. thing is now you can get one for, well, wait a minute. I was going to say you can get some of them for like a buck. Yeah. Well, what Mattel has done is Mattel's tried to keep the price point under a dollar. Okay. And so in doing that, uh, you see a lot of plastic now where you, as you rarely saw plastic back then. You know, maybe in the 70s or 80s, you saw like a plastic dump or something like that. Yeah. Or a plastic container. But other than that, uh, the ones that, that I know I grew up with, I don't really recall there being much any plastic. No, they were all die cast. Yeah. They cool. were. The Harrow on the number 40 fire uh, uh, farm tractor was the only one that was plastic that I could think of right off the bat. And I think wasn't the only thing that wasn't metal, maybe some of the wheels. I mean, originally it had metal wheels, but eventually they started doing kind of a rubber slash black plastic wheel on some of the vehicles, right? They did. The earliest ones had metal wheels, and then they went to uh, different colors of plastic. They went silver plastic or gray plastic. And then uh, several cars actually had hubs on them. Okay. So you collected these cars, you put them in boxes or display cases, you put them aside, uh, and you had five siblings? Uh, I, I did, yes, but I was the youngest. Were you the only one who was into that kind of stuff? Because siblings being siblings, they always try to get into your stuff. Well, the only thing that we actually had in common, none of them cared about Matchbox, but we had larger Tonka toys we had. Mm -hmm. And oh, we would okay. play with each other's, and uh, I, I still have my Tonka toys. <laughs> Tonka toys and the Matchbox. Okay. All right, so you've got over 180,000 Matchbox cars alone. What does your total collection consist of? Well, the 180,000, that's 164th. My total collection uh, of cars, of vehicles, is 205,000. Oh. In addition to that, uh, <laughs> additionally to that, we collect antique toys, and I've got about 125,000 antique toys. Uh-huh. 
and that's where the Tonka and stuff like that goes into. They don't go into my car numbers. Are you married? Yes. <laughs> And, and what is your what does your spouse say about that? She absolutely loves it. As a matter of fact, just this week, she's calling me from the store saying, "Do you have this one? Do you have that one?" <laughs> and I then we it. put on a con we put on a convention every year in conjunction with Mattel. Mattel's my sponsor, and they've done it for uh, eighteen years, and. Uh, she helps me do every single bit of it. Uh, she's really into it. She helps me do the card designs, which are done by, we have a local Mattel designer that lives about 10 minutes from me here in Albuquerque, Michael Geralda. Um, he's designed uh, over 5,000 Matchbox and Hot Wheels vehicles uh, wow. during his time. But he still designs and he designs uh, the Matchbox cards that you see in the store today. He designs quite a few of them. And he designs our convention cars, which are incredibly low numbered. Uh, some of them number as few as 25 models made in the factory by Mattel. Wow. That's wild. Now, where is your convention? I mean, obviously, yeah, a convention for, for Hot Wheels and, uh, and Matchbox cars. This is an annual event? It's an annual event, and ours is sponsored by the Matchbox team. Abe Lugo is the, is the Matchbox person that that's, that, that joins us here. But it's here in Albuquerque and we get uh, we get a lot of Hot Wheels collectors. Uh, Jennifer and her husband who put on the Hot Wheels convention, they come here every year. Um, and then we get other people from uh, every, sec every place in the world. Bob, you know what I'm thinking? Yeah, yeah we got a road you trip. You gotta come visit. Road trip! <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're invited. It's next July and I'll send you details and- All right. July, we should be, our, hopefully we'll be, we, had we'll to, be good we did a virtual event. Now, okay. you, you seem to be about our age in a sense, uh, maybe a little younger, but I, what did you do as a real job, you know, when well, you were I, doing Matchbox, doing Matchbox on the side? I had a couple of jobs. My first one, uh, I worked for at and I was uh, a software engineer uh, for at and at and Bell Labs, and I retired from that in 2000. And then I worked in healthcare up until uh, a year ago, this past January, I retired from there. And I'm, oh. I'm 63. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just Basically youngster. our age, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, that's, that's about the right same thing. So you went through all this and you still hung on to the cars. Um, so you basically lived in Albuquerque all your life pretty much, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so you never had to move them from place to place. So, um, well, how much of <laughs> from one house? I moved them from one house to another about five years ago, and I'm still unpacking. Uh, oh, so and that, th that, and that brings up a really good point. Uh -huh. How much of your collection is unpacked and on display at any one time? Uh, about maybe fifteen percent. So all that okay. stuff behind you, which includes display cases and, and um, I'm looking, uh, you know, permanent display cases uh -huh. and, and the, and the uh, ones you would see in the store full of cars, mm -hmm. the stuff behind you is maybe 10 to 15% of your overall collection. It, it is, it could be as much as 20%, but I, I doubt it. What we did is uh, when we moved here, uh, we decided no toys in the house, no cars in the house. And so we built a guest house. It's a 2,300 square foot guest house. And that's well, where my collection is. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm speechless. This is, a. Uh, you've got more <laughs> Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars than the manufacturers have. Well, I get a lot of them from them. I've I've been very fortunate, and I've purchased several employees' uh, collections. Wow. Uh, because one of the things I collect is prototypes, and I've accumulated about five to six, almost six thousand prototypes now. Well, those uh, are the more valuable of the uh, of these cars, is it not? They are. They're very. They they really are. Uh, a lot of employee ones I've purchased from a Mattel vice president. I've purchased from a couple of other Mattel employees, as well as employees uh, in the Far East. Also, I've purchased quite a few there. And 
And it's about 50-50 Matchbox Hot Wheels as far as the prototypes, as well as other brands too. What is the most expensive one you had? Boy, that's really hard to say. Uh, let me show you. I've actually got some one of a kinds. Mattel actually made uh, a special model just for me. It's a one of a kind. I've got a lot of one of a kinds. Uh, and this one right here. Let's get the Matchbox oh, Balloon. Big bus. Yeah, it's a gold bus. And it's got uh, Mattel made it. They've all signed it. Wow. Uh, it's got my name on top. Wow. Indeed. Uh, they made you one? They did. They, it's a one of a kind. They call them an ambassador bus is what it is. I used it's, to be, a, it's a double decker London bus basically. And it, uh, but it's a king size if I'm not mistaken, correct? No, it's 164th. Oh, it is 164th. It's, okay, it's so it's a regular Master match. Box, 164th, but I got that one and then they gave me the prototype for it too. Oh, uh, but I've got ones like that. I have uh, this one right here, Jurassic Park, which is a one of a kind. Hmm. It's a resin wow. model and it's in a special box. Uh, it's signed by the designer inside it. So I have a lot of stuff like that. Um, I have some vintage models that uh, were never released. I have a, a set they call the Golden 7 from Japan. And what they were going to do there is they were going to do a, a promotional, and this is about 1969, 1970 timeframe. They never did it, but they had the mock-ups all together. And I was able to get that from, from a Japanese collector. And that set there is, uh, I, I would say, priceless. I, I couldn't put a price on it. Well, wow. uh, I would say uh, maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 would probably start. Okay, so I can only go by my own personal experience with the cars. There, I went through a period where as a kid, I collected them, I played with them, I put them away. Went uh -huh. through high school, went through college, got interested again, started hitting swap meets, started going around and checking things. And then, of course, as I continued with my career, I would go to various cities and I would go check out um, basically stores that uh, had old stuff sitting around and I would start looking around for cars and that kind of thing. But you kind of sound like you supercharged that process and somehow ended up making connections with the people who actually run Matchbox. How did you do that? It actually started... Um Gosh, probably about the mid nineties. Uh, I ran into this one gentleman who uh, was a really, really good friend of Fred Bonner. And Fred Bonner, who you may know is the person who brought Matchbox to the United States. And uh, I used to work in New Jersey. I used to commute from Albuquerque to New Jersey actually for work. And Ray Sitch was this gentleman's name and he's passed on, but he was a very good friend of Fred Bonner's. And so I would go and I'd visit him, uh, spend days with him, weekends. And um, he's the one who kind of opened the door for that. As a matter of fact, one of the things, one of my prized possessions that I have is I have the original, and I got from him, uh, the original bankruptcy papers when Lesney went bankrupt. Oh, wow. And uh, what, what he kept is he kept what he called the, the Fred Bonner workbook or notebooks mm -hmm. and I have all the correspond well not all I have boxes of correspondence between Matchbox in England and different car museums when they were doing uh, maybe trying to get a yesteryear model made or a different model uh, I've got uh, hundreds of original blueprints uh, for models uh, and then uh, through him, I was able to meet uh, some of the people in, in New Jersey, uh, Matchbox people when it was owned by Tyco. Um, when it came to Mattel, I was actually contacted by Mattel and they wanted to uh, come to our convention because we had just started our conventions and see what it was about. And so one of the designers, again, Michael Heralda came to the convention one year just to see what it was about and the next year, they sponsored it. They made us a special model. Uh, they, uh, the director, Felix Host, uh, came out here, John Coyne, all the old 
Matchbox people, Rio Asada, who still designs for Hot Wheels today, uh, they came out here and uh, they liked what they saw. And then uh, they would at times ask for my assistance, like to get the color palettes for Matchbox. I sent them um, all the different model colors. As a matter of fact, it's in the design center in El Segundo right now. Uh, I donated one of every Matchbox model, just the model from 1953 to 2000. So uh, wow. hundreds and hundreds wow. of models I donated <laughs> to them. Uh, and if you go, if, have you been to the design center? I have not yet, no. It's on we, the to go. we need no. to go, we need to go. Oh, yeah, if you look there, um, Larry, where you've heard of Larry's Garage. Yes. Larry Wood. Yes. Okay. Larry Wood's office used to be right in this one area. And what they've done is they made it into a conference room when he retired. And the conference room wall, uh, I've worked with them and it's all windows, but it's a display case. Oh. And that's where those models, most of those models are displayed. Right by what they call the wall of fame, they have a big chalkboard where they, ha they call it the wall of fame. People go and sign there. But it's, it's right there in the design center. It's, it's, it's quite a display. You know, there's, there are so many Matchbox cars from back in the day. They used to be one through 75, and that continued on until really kind of recently, and they mm -hmm. would just kind of substitute in cars here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the time, uh, I remember in college trying to find ones to fit into my collection because I managed to hang on to most of them. Uh, I would always say, well, I'm always looking for this one, or I'm always looking for that one. Do you have any that you're still looking for, or do you pretty much have every Matchbox car that, or at least some form of every Matchbox car that uh, has been made over the years? Well, regular wheels, I have every model and every variation except for one. And Which one is that? It's the number four, the Triumph motorcycle with a sidecar in oh. copper. Oh. They... They, they claim that it was made in copper, and I've seen two of them, although both of them have been proven to be fakes. But there's a picture of one that I've seen in an early catalog, and that's the only one I'm missing. Uh, every casting, I have every casting. Hot Wheels, I have every casting of Hot Wheels, including the rear loader's uh, the rear loader surfboard model. So uh, I'm complete on that. <laughs> that was what, on the Diora? The... No, that was on the Volkswagen. Oh, Volkswagen okay. bus. yeah. Oh, wow. Surfboards came out of the back and then it wouldn't go well on the tracks. So they added the sides and put the surfboards in the side. Huh. Wow. I, I just remember going through and trying to pick all these cars out and then you'd go to the car shows and after a while you almost, and, and I think this is more of a reflection of me, but just you get over uh, whelmed by the sheer number of cars. I remember going to, um, Charlie Mack's house. Mm -hmm. I was at, and for those of you who are Matchbox people, you know who Charlie Mack is. Mack is uh, a guy who, like Jim, has a huge collection. He lives in Connecticut. Uh, he writes books that talks about the variations and what they're worth and that kind of thing. I was filling in uh, at ESPN in, uh, in Connecticut a couple of weekends in 1994. And I went back there and I knew Charlie lived there and I wrote him and I said, hey, can I see the collection? Because, you know, I've heard about this collection. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it's in his mom and dad's or was in his mom and dad's house. And he had them up on the walls. And, and just looking at those cars and the amazing collection he had, for a minute there, I was almost overwhelmed with the sheer number of things that you could get and then and the variations. It was almost like, well... I really want to get every car, but then you're after looking at his collection, I went, wow, <laughs> he has so many cars. And, and by that collection, but, but it was very, very impressive. Charlie's got a really nice collection. I was working in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts, actually. I had offices in Massachusetts. And I drove down and visited Charlie one, uh, one day when I was working there. And then also, Charlie, he's come to our convention once. He's been here. And then also, um, we went to the Philadelphia MICA convention. MICA's uh, the, the older Matchbox club that, uh, based out of England that no longer exists. But uh, 
uh, he does have quite a collection. Like me, uh, I talk with Charlie every, every week and when something new comes out, we kind of discuss it and uh, uh, we, we help each other out a lot. Do you have a favorite? A favorite car? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that white Ford GT I showed you. That's my favorite one. That one and uh, the Greyhound bus that I had as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. As a matter of fact, the Greyhound bus, I, I I convinced Mattel to actually recreate that one, which they've recently done. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we had that for one of our convention models uh, two years ago. So you, rem you, you remember this. Oh, yeah. I do. This is this is the yellow one, and before this is a yellow Ford GT that I'm holding, and it's got the red uh -huh. plastic on it. Now, before I make a big deal about, oh yeah, and I'm I don't know how how big of a variation it was, but I I have to admit it came from this, and I'm going to show you. Uh, I don't have the plastic original plastic on it, but this is a this is the Matchbox G4 mm -hmm. racetrack kit. And uh -huh. it has basically a tow truck in it, a fire truck, that Cadillac ambulance. It has, well, that's interesting. This is coming out red, but it's oh green because it's green screen behind me. That's what that is. Anyway, oh, okay. this is in green and you've got the race cars above it. Uh -huh. So uh, for those of you who are looking at it on YouTube, that's why it's brown. I did not get some fancy brown auto transporter. It's, it's all because of the green screen behind me, but. It's actually brown now. Oh, is it? And brown? It's brown now. Here. Yeah. Well, it's green, right. but yeah. <laughs> in here, the magic in here we thought you had something. We, here we thought you had discovered a new variation. Jim's like, wait a minute. I don't yeah. remember ever seeing that. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen that one. I've got, I've got the G4, but mine doesn't have that. <laughs> no, no. I almost, I almost broke new. I, everybody watching this from the Matchbox Club. Yeah, I almost uh, broke breaking news right here. Um, no, it is green. So yeah, it's. I didn't even think of it reacting green screen wise. But but those collections and and those variations, it, it's amazing that you probably have a list. Well, show me that again. Oh, it's the same model. Okay. Yeah, that's the uh, Ford GT. Yellow yeah. rims and yeah. Awesome that, model. <laughs> okay. Now, how, how big of a, uh, how rare is something like that? It's not rare, but it's a lot harder to find. Any model that came only in a gift set like that uh, is really hard to find. Uh, and it's the gift set that really uh, it is worth probably, uh, it, it probably doubles at least the value of the models. Oh. Because a lot of the models in there aren't really rare. However, uh, there's that one, and then uh, the red, uh, the red model, and the the uh, orange lotus came in there too. And right. those are a lot tougher to find. All right. If Randy was to have this kit valued, where would you estimate the value to be? Uh, I would say probably about four hundred dollars. Randy. Tell Marta this is not just a whimsical hobby. Yeah, but that's, I don't have the plastic on it. Would the plastic mean anything? Would it probably, does. You know. it, it does. But, you know, I think people are so good at doing things like that now that they could probably put that plastic on there and it would be really hard to tell other than it wouldn't be fragile, uh, that ah. it's not original. Yeah. People no. are really good, uh, you know, at, at doing stuff like that. And there's a lot of... Uh, I mean, I have a ton of gift sets that uh, I, I've purchased, even because the you know, even if the plastic isn't perfect. Hmm. Uh, my earliest gift set that I have is from the '50s, and uh, it's got a tear in the top. But I would never trade it for anything because I've never seen another one. Hmm. So. We're talking about Matchbox cars here. What? Uh... What are other sets that you have? I mean, do you collect corgis? Do you collect Tootsie toys? Mm -hmm. Do you collect what? What? else do you did you really like and thought was really cool to collect well most of uh, back then it was matchbox dinky and hot wheels those were probably the three that uh that i collected the most uh, although uh i do have other ones that i've since collected uh, i have a guy that comes to our convention from uh from japan uh each year and he's helped me fill out uh 
a collection, you know, that I've been, you know, trying to get Fun Ho. Have you ever heard of Fun Ho? No, but it sounds like fun. No, no, no I don't. Fun. Fun. P H U N or F U N? Yeah, here's a here's my display of Fun Ho right here. Oh my. Okay. And that's every model and not every variation, but most variations. Wow. You know, they kind of look matchbox-ish. Well, they do in the boxes as well. In yeah, fact, they, they look oh, very yeah. matchbox-ish. I'm looking I'm at some of them. Um, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's another thing because how many companies actually would copy kind of the matchbox plan of, of doing certain cars? You know, they, they would show matchbox cars and they would end up making their own versions of it. All right, we're going to say goodbye to Bob now. And Bob, care, Bob I tell you what, let's take a break. And when we come back, Bob will be gone and will. Uh, we'll continue. We will go through a little bit of a tour with Jim Gallegos and his Matchbox collection in near Albuquerque, New Mexico. You're listening and watching to the Talking About Cars podcast on radio.com and YouTube. And we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, we're back. I'm Randy Crudoon. We have uh, on the show... This is going to be a lot of fun. I, I think Jim Gallegos has uh, been showing us around his his building that he, it's an ode to Matchbox and all the other toy cars he played with when he was a kid because he built kind of a little cottage in the back of his home and it has all his toy cars in it. Okay, Jim, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about some of the vehicles you have and show us some of what you have here and I'll try and describe it for those on radio.com. And uh, you were showing us some really kind of fun things. I was going to say that was your finger. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do oh, this. Oh, there you so go. Go yeah. ahead. All right. Well, this is some of my displays. That's a Canadian display from 1967. Uh, in this display, actually, the rarest uh, convoys uh, would be these ones right here. But there's stuff like that. And then I've got. Uh, so it's tractor trailer rigs, basically. Yes. And these ones here, there's maybe 30 known. They were never released to the public. Um, other things in this case are, you've probably heard of the early Moco toys, the elephants. Okay. And these are made out of zinc from the 40s. Uh, I like resins these are large three to one resins and there's uh, just a few other prototypes uh, there's uh, some wooden yesteryear models um of course there's explain the wooden prints. west wooden yesteryear models yesteryear models for the matchbox people out there they were basically the cars from the turn of the century in the 1900s uh and i'm talking 1800s to 1900s uh, wooden one, so you actually had the ability to get the original models from it, from Matchbox. Right, these are, yes, yeah, so these are the original ones that they used as a model to, to make the, uh, the models that they released. They did wooden model, as they would make larger models here. Okay. Uh, in this one, there's, uh, they made a, a bait press. These are early things. Uh, there's uh, coronation coaches. These are the small ones. Uh, one of the most famous models that Matchbox ever made was the coronation coach. And here's some of those. And these are over a foot long. Uh, and they did these to celebrate the coronation uh, King Edward, who passed away during the, the time that these were, were made, um, was actually removed from the coronation coaches early on, so there's not very many with both the king and the queen figure in them. But um, they made... Uh, I've got chrome ones, I have silver painted, uh, gold plated, or gold, uh, they're not gold plated, but they're gold colored. Uh, metallic -y, and then just regular ones. Uh, other things they made even before these are 
these up here. And I don't know if you could see those very well, but they made cement mixers and they made um, tractors, it looks like, uh, some of the stuff they have there. Uh, gift sets, I've got all kinds of gift sets. And some of these are uh, uh, Japanese ones, Korean ones. Uh, I've got uh, the earliest one I have is this one right here. It's a German gift set from the 50s. Uh, let's see if I could bring it over here and show you it. But I've never seen another one in all my years of collecting. He's opening up a, uh, a gift set and it shows cars from the 50s and 60s. Uh, these are all from the 50s. Uh, and when this one was made, Matchbox had not even gone through the first 75 models in creating them yet. So if you look on the back, it actually has a number 76 and it's listing the Cadillac as number 76, which later on went to be uh, number 27. But that's uh, the gifts that I was telling you about earlier. Uh, I have to say I, this, you know, one of the... One of the things I did as a kid, which just shows you when you don't know things, you do silly stuff, is uh -huh. Matchbox came up with a case, a carrying case, that mm -hmm. was made with plastic on the inside. And, and I, don't, I don't mean plastic trays, but plastic to kind of showcase what was inside. And then you'd have, mm -hmm. you'd clip it with a snap. Mm -hmm. And then little Randy from elementary school came up with this wacky idea of, oh, this is great. I should put the picture of the Matchbox car in the slot. That way I'll always know where to put it. So then I started carving up all the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually no. pretty popular. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet you people did that. But of course, yeah. later when you realized, no, you shouldn't have done that because the Matchbox car, assuming it's in somewhat decent shape with the box, is sort of worth more than it is uh, without the box. I'm curious, what do you tell people when it comes to collecting Matchbox cars? Because I know that when it comes to collecting classic cars, mm -hmm. uh, people have told us, collect what you like, um, collect what you like, and don't worry about the rest of it. Don't worry about how much it's gonna be just collect what you like because that way you'll enjoy it more. Uh, you can't totally compare it to collecting a real car, but is that what you kind of tell people when it comes to collecting nowadays? It is because I think in today's world, it would be impossible to complete a collection just about. It would cost you a fortune. Uh, so I tell people, you know, collect what you like and if you see something you like better, uh, you know, trade it off. <laughs> <laughs> trade it off or go to a convention and maybe they have a swap so, uh, meet there and sell or something like that. Okay. So uh, what I'm showing here, these are, uh, these are prototype Hot Wheels or employee models. A lot of everyone's probably seen the Hot Wheels uh, set, the Hard Rock uh, Cafe uh, shown in the middle there. Right. Okay. This is the resin. Uh, the ones on the bottom uh, are actually the resin prototypes, for, or the top, I'm sorry, are the resin prototypes for it. And uh, those were designed by Michael Geralda. And then other stuff that's in there, um, this one is signed by Elliot Handler, the white Camaro uh, set, and those are numbered. Uh, but most of these are just employee models and pre-production ones here. Um, other stuff that I collect is, uh, well, of course, convoys, uh, early displays with, uh, this one has yesteryear boxes, the first nine yesteryear boxes. Wow. Uh, and then uh, almost every place you look, you'll see prototypes of some kind. Uh, there's some hot wheels, uh, some heavyweights. Um, Hot Wheels Japanese display majorette. 
Japanese display and Tomika Japanese display. Do you have kids, by the way? I have one son that lives there in California, down in Orange County. Now, does he is he into Matchbox cars or other cars, Hot Wheels at all? He is into Matchbox cars, and he collects uh, Mercedes because he actually buys and sells classic Mercedes cars. Oh, real cars. Real cars, too. Yeah. Awesome. Did you so, ever get into collecting real cars? You know, I had one car that I really uh, enjoyed, uh, and uh, I kept it for about 25 years, and I sold it uh, in 2000. It was, uh, I had a Trans Am uh, with this crazy uh, big engine. <laughs> I had a an all aluminum 540 cubic inch blower motor in it. And what year Trans Am, do you remember? It was a 75. And I sold it with 17,000 miles in 2000. It's 25 years old. But um, that's really the only one that I had. Now, um, some of the Matchbox cars you see actually are my cars. The Tacoma pickup, I'm the one who recommended that one. And uh, they built it on my car. The, the Range Rover, the, the blue Range Rover Sport, uh, that's my wife's car. They use the color and everything for that one. Uh, the Mercedes, the ML500, that's my car. They did that one. Uh, so um, now I just have just regular cars, nothing, nothing fancy. This is prototypes. Everything in here is a pre-production. And there's actually one really desirable one more than any others, and it's that one right there, the old Redline school bus. And it's one of, I think Bruce Pascoe, we we're talking, and I think there's like maybe three or four of these in existence. And you can tell it has a different casting on it, and it doesn't say heavyweights like the normal ones would. Right. So See, this is, all... this is big stuff, though. I mean, when the, when the company is making Matchbox cars out of your personal vehicles, <laughs> that's, uh -huh. that's very impressive, I got to tell you. Well, there's something else here that, let me show you. I'll come over here. They actually put, uh, we have a ranch. And this one right here, that actually. Okay, so that's a Chevy a truck. Birth year. That was done for me. But this one was done a couple years ago, Matchbox. Yeah, it looks like um, a Chevy truck. Kind of looks like a Chevy pickup truck from, I want to say, the 51, 52, 53-ish. Sean, Holland Sean. And it has ABQ and the year for Albuquerque. Um, this one, it came out last year. It's got my name on it. And this, these were all available in the stores. Uh, and then... Um, this one here, when my son graduated from high school, we bought him a Land Rover. And this is his car. They use it's his color. And on the rear license plate, I don't know if you could see it, but it's got his initials and his birth year. Wow. So that was kind of neat. We've had a few of them. We've had them done for my wife. Um, but these so are cars that they actually did that now people can buy at their nearby Target or something like that. Yes. See, I, I yeah, think I got to hang ones, around you a little yeah, bit. These maybe are ones this you can actually go and buy. Okay, so we got to hang around you a little bit. That way, maybe they'll uh, do one of my 57 Safari Pontiac wagon. That, that could be. I, nobody's making that. Hot Wheels is not making that car. I'll tell you that much. That's a really, you know, wagons are really in. My son's got uh, a Mercedes wagon, and they're really, really, uh, you know, hot commodity now. That, that would be a car that would be cool to have on Matchbox. I've always been a Matchbox. That would be a really cool one. Yeah, wouldn't it? Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show us some of your stuff and, and talk a little bit about Matchbox cars and, and also some of the other vehicles you have. Any words of advice? 
for people watching this going, oh my gosh, I have to go into the garage and see if, see if I still have my matchbox cars from when I was a kid. Uh, how do I get my wife or whatever to uh, explain, uh, to tolerate me dragging it in and putting it in my office on a display case level? Well, oh boy, I tell you what, bring her over here. We'll walk through here and maybe she'll have a little bit of sympathy for you. <laughs> well, and then you have to bring her to Albuquerque in July to our convention. I think we'll have to. I think we'll have to. Yeah. That's a standing invitation and uh, we accept. Jim, sure. we, uh, thanks so much for your time and thanks so much for showing us your collections and, and all that. It's, it's quite an amazing ride. Well, it's fun. I, I just totally enjoy doing it. And I appreciate you uh, sharing this with others because that's what, to me, what collecting is all about is sharing. It's more important than anything else. Absolutely. Stay with us a second. Don't forget to folks, remember to like and subscribe and share this podcast to everybody uh, on radio.com, knx1070.com, the radio.com app. You can listen on Alexa. You could listen as well on uh, some of the other spots out there like Apple Podcasts. Watch our video podcasts on our Two Tired Guys Productions channel on YouTube. Follow us on social media if you'd like to support us for doing some of the things you don't see anywhere else. Get your name on our credits. Don't forget, become a Two Tired Guys patron on Patreon.com. Until next time, I'm Randy Cardoon. You saw Hot Rod Bob. That's Jim. And we've all had some fun talking about cars. We'll see you next time, everybody. I'll kiss you.